So, Parshas Re starts with really a, um, a concept that really ends later on in the in the Chumash, as the uh, Akash Baruch Hu says, Rei Anochi Nosein Lefnechem Ayom Bracha Kolo. The bracha that will come if you follow, the color that will come when you don't follow. And uh, the obvious question that sort of comes out at you is, well, <laughs> um, you know, if, if, if those are my two options, you know, and then the base of the end of the story is, Akash uh, Baruch Hu reminds us, and the Moshe Benah tells us very movingly later on, a few parashas later, Ubechata Bechayim. Choose the bracha, choose life, because this is really essentially what your, your options are. You have life and death, the famous refrain um, of choosing life. So just you know, one point of, you know, what's, what's the message, what's the uh, reason for HaKadosh Baruch Hu even needing to, to uh, remind us and to tell us who wouldn't want life, who wants death. And of course, there's a famous Daza Kanim that brings a medrash that sort of explains why there is this uh, clarity that, requ- that is required here of, of what I'm choosing and what it is that's in front of me, uh, what is life all about, sort of the essential question of you know, what am I doing and where am I going, because the Dazakan brings a muscle of the fellow who is standing at the fork in the road, by the, or there are, there are two roads that the, the old man is standing by and the fellow comes by and wants to know which road he should go down. And one road looks very inviting, one road looks so appealing, and the other road looks horrible. And uh, certainly the natural inclination is to take that road that, that uh, looks good, smells good, feels good, everything is good about it. And who, who would want to go down that road that has uh, thorns and uh, obstacles in, the fr- in front of it? And the Dazakanim says that the Zokain tells this person, don't you dig, do- go down that road that looks so inviting, that uh, at the, at the beginning seems to be so appealing, so, so pleasant, so beautiful. He says, because you have no idea what goes, what ends up at the end of that road. You have no idea of what that road really ultimately leads to and you're gonna end up in a horrible state, in a horrible situation. If you, if you go down that tough road, while at the beginning it might be tough, at the end, there is this incredible, beautiful road that you will go to, uh, through uh, in, in its entirety. So it's certainly worth the difficult trek at the beginning because what it ends up uh, is, is, is total serenity and peace and, 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 and beauty. So essentially that is you know, really what the Kodesh Baruch Hu is, is sort of telling us is that while on the one hand maybe to the discerning uh, individual who understands the long-term implications of what it is that, that's, uh, that I'm doing, what, what's going to be the result, the long-term result of my actions, yeah, then, then it's obvious, and the Bukhar Tabachayim doesn't seem to be necessary. Uh, but uh, when, when you're looking in the, at the, in the immediate situation, then clearly it becomes confusing, because uh, the Eitzara does a very good job of not allowing us to sort of see the long-term and just sort of grab what's in front of me right now. And what's in front of me right now is, is a beautiful road that uh, while it leads to devastation, Bukhar Tabachayim, I'm giving you two, two options. It's fascinating that there are only two, as the Sephora points out, that uh, there are only two options because, because we're, not a, we're not a nation that handles mediocrity. There's no, there, it that doesn't work for us. Be, uh, being a Benini, while it might work as Sarah Simei Tshuva, the Rambam says we have a right to sort of look at ourselves as Benenim and, and uh, mo- be motivated to do Tshuva for Yom Kippur, but essentially, uh, the Sephora says, we, we have two choices. As a nation, we have two choices. As a people, as an individual, we have, we're part of Klai Yisrael. We have two choices. We have, we have the bracha and we have the kala. We have the chayim, we have the mavis. We don't really have anything in between. That is our destiny. Um, and that's, again, something that we need to remember, that there's really that idea of sort of disappearing and the, you know, falling by the wayside and being uh, mediocre. That, that's not... It's not for us an option. It just doesn't exist. Being mediocrity, by definition, means you're going down. Um, it's if you're not fighting to get better, then the, there's a natural slow progression uh, that moves in the other direction. And, and one last point from the Re'ya Nochi Nosel Fnechem, the Farshim point out that uh, Re'ya Zalosh and Yochid and Nosel Fnechem is a Losh and Rabbim. 
So what's what's the uh, the contrast? What's the, what's the distinction here between uh, why you start off lush and yachid, and and lufnechem uh, is lush and rabim? So the first you indicate this again, probably more than one answer. It's certainly more than one answer, but but uh, one of the answers that seems to sort of and also be so indicative of what really Hakadosh Baruch is telling us here is the idea that the, this is a message to Klai Yisrael. Ray, all of all of Klai Yisrael needs to see that we collectively have ha, have uh, this choice. We have bracha and we have kala. We have chayim. We have maves. And uh, certainly the message is for each individual, meaning that that uh, as our decisions have to be seen from the point of view that I can make that difference. That even though yes, it's a it's a uh, commandment and it's a directive to all of Klai Yisrael. The last thing we can sort of feel is. You know, I, I don't really matter. It's all whatever we do together, whatever Klai Yisrael is doing. So I'll sort of just go with the flow and just allow, you know, uh, everybody else to sort of dictate what it is that uh, a Klai Yisrael will be doing. But, but my decision and my actions per se don't really matter. And that's really something that the Eitzhara tries to convince us of that uh, we, that we're a little speck on the on a map in the face of the earth, what, what are my actions uh, going to do to make a difference? So uh, what I choose is really not, the, not that important, so I'll sort of just get lost with the flow. And Akash Baruch was saying, no, Re'e, we have to look at our destiny as individuals, that there is a specific goal and a specific potential that we each and every one of us, one of us have as, as members of Klai Yisrael to make that difference. We could make that difference. We could be that, that factor in Klai Yisrael's destiny. And certainly in our own future, we can't uh, sort of rely on, on the rest of Klai Yisrael. We have to look at it as re'e. And even though there is certainly a collective force that, that matters, and we have to care about our brothers and sisters, we have to obviously be part of the klal, but at the end of the day, the decisions that we make, it's re'e. Look and see what, what's in front of you. And uh, remember that while uh, the choices might seem easy, the brach and the kola might seem obvious, uh, it's going to get a little confusing, and it's going to be a little murky. And we have to remember that that old man is standing on the road warning us, be careful. And Bez Hashem, if we keep this in mind and recognize our inherent greatness and the significance of our individual actions, uh, Bez Hashem will always remember that, uh, that the mandate and that uh, incredibly powerful, inspirational uh, uh, message that, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has later us for us, uh, later for us in the Parashat Zvarm, of a bechat to bechayim, as Hashem will all be a bechur chayim, and that's chus bizochet to a bezoshem, a good gevetsh jar.